Hey everyone, it's MK. I'm taking a few minutes out of my afternoon this this afternoon to explain a little bit about using the move function for doing some cross hatching. Okay, now I'm showing you this from within simulation. So you have to have a good imagination this afternoon. You have to have a good dose of pretending here. Okay, so what you're looking at on the screen is just a block or a rectangle that I have set up. And let's say that you want to just cross hatch this area using the pro stitcher using the move function. Okay, so this example, we are assuming that we don't have anything in this area that we are going to want to crop around. Okay, that's a different application. This is just straight line cropping, or rather straight line cross hatching using our pro stitcher. Okay, what, what you're also looking at on the screen are these little dots. These are just uh, little dots that I created to represent where you might do a little bit of marking with let's say like a chalk pencil or maybe a friction pen or a blue soluble marker, something, you know, whatever your favorite marking tool is that's going to be easy to get off your quilt top. All right, and these are loosely spaced at an inch apart. I just did that really quickly and tried to space those evenly. All right, so what you would do is in whatever fashion you want, let's go along there and just do a little bit of marking along the bottom and along the side. Okay, next thing that you're going to do is you're going to grab your handlebars. I'm grabbing my simulator and I'm going to move it into position on top of that first dot. And we'll start on the bottom. You can start on the side if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and start on the bottom. Okay, you're going to do needle down, needle up. You're going to get your bobbin thread pulled up and you're just going to do a few little tie off stitches right there, right? A little, a little manual tack stitches to get yourself locked. Okay, next you want to be under pro stitcher and you're going to look for move. And I want to call your attention to the right side of the screen. You're going to see a couple things at the top. One is called continuous and one is stitch. Okay, well we definitely want to stitch. And this box right here, that's for the speed of your machine. So you're going to have to do a little bit of testing with your own machine in your studio to see how fast that you want it to stitch. Okay. Now, in this particular example, I would not recommend using continuous because we want to have manual control over how far the machine stitches from this point to that point. Okay. All right, so we've got our bobbin thread, we're knotted, we're in position. I have my speed turned down pretty slow for, for simulation. You do your testing and we're on stitch. Okay, we're gonna hold, we're gonna press and hold this arrow and as soon as our machine reaches the side of the block, we're gonna undepress that arrow. Okay, so I'm gonna do this as best as I can in simulation, okay? All right, I'm pressing and holding, it goes up to that next that next mark and I'm going to go ahead and undepress. Okay, so now we've gotten to the next point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch upward to our next spot that we have marked. Okay, again we're going to press and hold, this time we're going to go up. Now here's one of the things that you have to imagine here in simulation is that stitching is going down, right? Okay, so it's, it's not stitching and leaving a mark right now, but that's because I'm in simulation. You would be at your machine, so it would be stitching. So if you can imagine what is happening happening is that you're creating these perfectly 45 degree angled lines this way and then this way and then this way and then this way okay so you're going to get them all done in one direction if you just want to stop there well then you're just going to have one set of lines going 45 degrees if you want it to go in both directions then you're going to have to come back Let's pretend, let's say we've got all of our lines done in one direction, okay? We're gonna come back, let's go ahead and start on our first dot again. We're gonna get our bobbin thread pulled up, do a little knotting right there. We're gonna make sure we're under pro stitch or move. And this time we're gonna be going in the opposite direction until we get to the, to the next uh, seam line. And then we're gonna undepress that. Okay, so again, use your imagination. Click, hold, let it stitch until it gets to where you don't want it to stitch anymore, and then you're going to release. Okay, so I'm hitting the mark. 
Uh, I overstitched a little bit there, but it's hard in simulation, okay? Now, think about this. You have already done the stitching in the first direction. So right now you don't even need any more marks up here because you're going to have stitching lines to refer to here, right? Okay, so as I mentioned, you got to use a good dose of a good dose of imagination, okay? You would stitch over to where that next stitching line was already down and then you're going to press and hold going in the opposite direction until you get to the to the bottom, okay? And you're just going to do that in both directions. You're gonna, first going to go in one direction, and then you're going to go in the other direction. As long as you give yourself some registration marks along two sides, those are the marks you're going to shoot for. When you're going in the opposite direction, you're going to have stitching down. So those are the marks you're going to go for. And before you know it, this whole box is going to be stitched in perfectly 45 degrees because Pro Stitcher can, can do that. Isn't she wonderful? I just love her. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Again, I, I hope that you can just imagine that those stitching lines were there, but that's how you use the move function to do a little bit of cross hatching. All right, everybody, it's MK. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Happy quilting. Bye bye.